Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here. And now that Jurassic World Dominion is out, we're gonna discuss what is the best Jurassic Park slash world sequel. Let's get into it. Hello, new person, who are you? Properly introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Jordan. I'm the CEO and editor-in-chief of geekanything.com, uh, where we talk about anything and everything geeky. Cool, cool. Uh, you're on Peg Warmers a bunch. I am on Peg Warmers a bunch. I'm like the de facto <laughs> guest star of like, every third or fourth episode, I think. I'm on Peg Warmers a bunch. Uh, and last time we were doing Peg Warmers, you talked about how you would love to do a Jurassic Park episode with me. Absolutely. And I want to thank you so much for being here. You know, everyone knows I'm friends with Clayton. Yeah. Unfortunately, he lives in a different state. So, you know, yeah. I can only get him here once in a while. Uh, but, you know, my, my co-host, Johanna... Mm -hmm. uh, she was going to be in this episode. She's a big Jurassic Park 3 fan, so she would have had a lot to say. <laughs> uh, but even though this was on the schedule for a month, she double booked something and bailed out. So what I'm saying is you're now my best friend. Uh, now let's talk about the Jurassic Park franchise. Yes. Now we're not going to go super into everything because I already have commentary tracks and other videos about the Jurassic franchise. Sure. But yeah, we're going to touch on a lot of the sequels and see where we stand on them. We're going to talk about the new movie. Uh, what a movie. Yeah. <laughs> we'll decide what's a lot. Well, we'll decide what is the best. Now, what is your uh, little briefly? What's your backstory with the Jurassic franchise? So when I was a kid, Jurassic Park was the first movie I remember seeing in theaters. So that was like mm. defining definitive to yeah. me. For How like, are you? Sorry, I, I'm 34. So okay. I was okay. like, I was like six. I would actually, I would have been five about to be six. I, w I so was like three or four when I, I don't know. It's probably not the first movie I saw in theaters, but yeah, I, I, that's the first movie I have vivid memories of. I'm in sure theaters. I saw other stuff. That's the first movie I remember. Yeah. So okay. like, I remember that experience and it just yeah. has stuck with me and it became that movie that was sort of defined. Wow. I love movies. Yes. And, uh, dinosaurs were already my thing at the time, which is, I think why my parents took me to see it, even though I yeah. still have nightmares and, uh, <laughs> it, uh, it scared the living crap out of me when I was a kid, and yeah. it also became like my intro to sci-fi and horror and yeah. everything that now defines who I am. So I, it's... I, I have a friend; uh, she is terrified of dinosaurs because oh, yeah. of this movie, and then she's terrified of whales because of Free Willy when really <laughs> freaks out. So when she found out the new movies have the big mosasaur, yeah. she was like, uh, "She was like, no." <laughs> she's like, "Not, I will never." And then I, I texted her. I'm like, "Hey, the new movie has the mosasaur swimming with whales," and she just wrote, "No." <laughs> But yes, yeah, so I'm kind of the same boat with you. I'm just yep. a few years younger. But yeah, Jurassic Park, it was kind of hard to miss as a kid. Yeah. Uh, and it was great. And I have plenty of memories about it, which I have in that other episode. Mm -hmm. And then they did the Lost World Jurassic Park. Now, when I was a kid, I saw this movie and it was it was Jurassic Park 2. Yeah. You yeah. had to you had to go see it. You had Absolutely. to love it. And I was like, well, you know, that movie had three T-Rexes, so it's the best movie ever made. Absolutely. Because when you're six or seven, that's how you rate movies. Like, yeah. wait, wait, wait. It has, it has two big ones and one little one? Oh, that's the best movie ever made. Absolutely. As I've gotten older, as many fans know, I've kind of fallen out of love with this movie. It has... You see, here's the thing. Even like a bad Spielberg movie, mm -hmm. like freaking Crystal Skull, will still have like a couple good moments here it's and there. It's still a Spielberg movie. Yeah. Uh, it's not a very good one, but like... There are some good moments in this. No. I just, the pacing for the story is awful to me. Yeah. It is very, and that's something that critics were criticizing at the time. Like, man, this thing takes forever to get started. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the characters in this. The good guys are kind of responsible for everything that goes wrong. Yeah. Because if you think about it, the bad guys, they would have taken them to a zoo. Yeah. And then I, well, later movies will contradict Not this. Not to but mention that they like kind of have the rights to them. Like they own, Yeah, they, they kind of own, the, own the property. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like Hammond's nephew is supposed to be the bad guy. It's like, well, he was handed a company that's falling apart. He's got to do something. He's yeah. like, he's like, what? We have, we have another Jurassic Park. Yeah. Let's just take him there. We got to do something. We're being sued left and right. We need yeah. to do something. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't like Ian Malcolm's character in it. It feels very out of character for me. That's the thing I was going to touch on later, but yeah. for me, uh, it starts there. Yeah. Like Malcolm, every time we see him, feels like a completely different person. Yeah. And I actually, that, it's kind of jarring. Yeah. It's almost like, to me, it's almost like a running gag that it's the chaos theory, yeah. in, in effect, that Malcolm's just chaotically different yeah. every time we run into him. And of course, 
this is a result of them asking Michael Crichton to bring Malcolm back, even though he dies in the book, and then the island is firebombed. Uh, and the, I love that Michael Crichton couldn't figure out a way to bring him back, so he's like, uh, the doctors are great. It's like, that doesn't explain <laughs> shit. So I'm fine with Ian Malcolm being more jaded and less fun than the first movie, yeah. but like, in my mind, I'm like, he would have never went back to that island. He would have been like, you sent my girlfriend to an island? I'm real upset about that. I'm not going there, but I'm real upset yeah. about it. Yeah. The fact that he goes to the island, I'm like, nah, nah, this doesn't ring true to me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. How do you feel about Lost World? It's um, a lot of people's favorites. I was going to say Lost World is absolutely my favorite yeah. of the, the franchise, uh, other than the first, obviously. But like, yeah. the first is like top two favorite. It's like, depending on which day you catch me, it's going to be the top two also, favorite movies. Favorite does not necessarily equate best. Keep that in mind. But keep going. Keep going. But Lost World is like one of those movies. Again, it came out. I was like at that point yeah so it was like holy crap this is the coolest movie i've ever seen and to me honestly i still feel like the raptors were at their best in that movie uh, um, the tiger stripe, the tiger stripe ones, raptors yeah. with the the long grass like that scared yeah. the shit out of me you love the acrobats i don't mind the acrobats you know what it made sense they touched on it earlier here's in the, the, movie. Here's the it wasn't like a that scene could have been edit it a little differently yeah the fact is she's doing the bars before the raptor ever jumps yeah so it's like wait <laughs> what if it had just left <laughs> what, what, if, what if it had just jumped and grabbed it by the ankle pulled him down she's still doing fucking <laughs> i mean yeah i mean it's, yeah it's all about the splash you know yeah, so it's yeah. Gotta, you know i gotta have some sizzle yeah but it's i feel like the lost world just did so much that the first movie didn't get to really touch on because you got to see more of the dinosaurs which yeah. i mean more doesn't necessarily equate to better, but you got much yeah. more of a feel for them in this movie. Yeah. It was nice you, seeing them like out and about. Yeah. And got, they're trying to be like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Lost mm -hmm. World. Uh, the book is very different, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love the book. I read that. I don't I know like, why they kid. gave them like all these kind of guidelines to do that book. And then they used almost nothing from it. They they used the trailer. Some, they took some concepts. <laughs> they used the trailer, Ian Malcolm coming back. And a couple character names. A couple character names. They didn't do like the weird like virus and how the dinosaurs are. <laughs> the whole thing in that book is like the dinosaurs don't know how to be dinosaurs. So they're like just turning into crazy monsters because <laughs> they don't have that natural upbringing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's got its moments. Yeah. Think... Um, it just feels like it, feel, it feels like Spielberg wasn't 100% in on it. For me, yeah. the movie completely falls off when they get to the third act and go up to San Francisco. So, really? like, honestly, if that movie just ended at the end of the island sequence, yeah. I would have been, like, still way happier with it well, than I am with the rest of that movie. Now, why do you <laughs> think they went to the city? What's your uh, 100%. It was Spielberg. He said he wanted to do it. Uh, yeah. He he openly said, was like, I, I thought, saw this as an idea, and I was like, oh, let's just do that. Yeah. And it sounded, he canceled a whole other sequence that was supposed to happen yeah. there, as I'm sure you're aware. And oh, yeah. If the you guys watch like, Clayton yeah. and everybody, like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where uh, the ideas I heard about what that movie was supposed to end with versus the movie ending we got. Yeah. It's just like so depressing for me to like think well, of how cool that could have been with the pterodactyls. Yeah. And uh, just well, everything here's the happening. Thing. Now, some people say, oh, it was a tribute to the original Lost World, how they bring a dinosaur back. Or it's a tribute to King Kong, how yeah. they bring King Kong back. But what I think it really <clears throat> is, they wanted to beat Godzilla 98 to the punch a year early. I, I bet yeah. he, he knew. It's like, oh, fuck them. I'm going to put the T-Rex in San Diego <laughs> a year early. And then when that movie comes out, people are like, do I have to see it? I can just watch Lost World. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and like that makes sense. By the way, I like I actually like the city stuff because it feels different. Um, that, it feels like that was the only way they could have went, and it took a while for them to circle back to that. <laughs> See, my thing is, I don't like that it's different. I like no. the idea of like, oh, it's dinosaurs on an island. Great, let's yeah. do that. And then yeah. it's more dinosaurs on a completely separate you're, you're island right. that's, it's, a, that's related to it. I love that conceptually. I'm just yeah. like, keep them there. That way, if the people are there, they probably have it coming because what an idiot they are to go. Yeah. <laughs> like they know what's on that island. They went anyway. Here's the thing. I, I, I do agree to a point. It's like, okay, well, this one we're exploring dinosaurs without cages, living freely. And mm -hmm. and then they did the city. It's like, well, maybe we should have did the city for part three and separated those. Let's focus on one. I kind of get what you're saying there. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's just, I know it's a lot of people's favorite. People are nostalgic for it. I have some nostalgia for it. It's just, it's one of those things like from my childhood, like as I rewatch it, I just fall more and more out of love with it. It's like, like the Star Wars prequels. It's like, yeah. Like, man, I used to love these and I can't, I just can't anymore. <laughs> There's a couple of movies like that that I watch as a kid. And I'm just like, man, this used to be, 
so good in my head. And now that I'm older, I'm like, eh, nah. But yeah, it's Spielberg did kind of phone a lot of it in, but I think it's because this is at the time where he was doing multiple movies at once. He yeah. still kind of does it. Because remember, yeah. he did Jurassic Park and Schindler's List at in the, the same, same year. Yeah. Which they were talking to, like, I saw all the interviews. He's like, <laughs> you know how awkward it is, like, like editing and shooting this movie about, like, the most horrifying thing that's ever happened to my people. And then people are calling me being like, hey, how do you want the dinosaur to growl? It's like, man, that would have been really hard. And this is around Save a Private Ryan. So, yeah. like, that's what he was really focused on. Yeah. Like, you I, can't just stay in one timeline. <laughs> yeah. And I think other people talk about I think I talked about Clayton, too. I feel like he didn't think the second movie, because Joe Johnson wanted to do this. Yeah. And I don't think he was like, mate, I think my name needs to be attached to this so people actually go see it. Yeah. But then when it got bad reviews, he's like, eh, anyone can do it. I don't care. Uh, so, yeah, it, we could debate it forever. I've actually debated it in other videos. Now, Jurassic Park 3. What do you feel about Jurassic Park 3? Alan. Alan. Um, <laughs> that scene is definitive for me of that movie, but... uh. My biggest problem with Jurassic Park 3 is that it came out, it was initially meant to be a completely different movie. Like, knowing what I know now, I'm oh, much yeah. more forgiving of that movie. It's kind of like me with that. Yeah. How so, that was butchered. Well, yeah. like, Jurassic Park 3, they were rewriting the entire script as they yeah. shot. They had to use set pieces that were built for scenes that were no longer in the movie. Yeah. And like, the fact that it came out as coherent as it did is just mind-blowing. Yeah. Uh, but my biggest thing that sort of helps that movie for me now is that in the ancillary material that's come out since for mm -hmm. Jurassic World and beyond, they've touched on a lot of the issues I had with the movie <laughs> and sort of explained them away as like, oh, well, Dr. Wu was doing things in private. Yeah. And so it's like, I don't have a problem. Like before I was like, like Alan even touches on it. The Spinosaurus mm. wasn't on Injun's list. I yeah. don't even think that was discovered till after the first movie came out. Yeah. Uh, so it was like, <laughs> I think it was no, no, like. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. Spinosaurus did exist. Yes. We like. There was no complete. The one skeleton we had was bombed in World War Two. Gotcha. So a lot. Of, I don't think no because the the first Jurassic Park toy line had a had spinosaurus. spinosaurus. And it, it was like this nothing, little thing. Yeah, it looks nothing like how it was it, like a two legged Demetrodon. Well, here almost. here's the thing: the Jura <laughs> the spinosaurus of Jurassic Park three is not what a spinosaurus looks like. Which now. also is something that they touch on in the uh, the extra material for mm. Jurassic World and like yeah. the online marketing. They touch on it's just like that was their supposedly their first attempt at mm. the. Uh, the hybrids mm. and like doing all different stuff with it, which explains what, why the Spino is so drastically different than it realistically should have been. Why so it's, for, why it's chasing people when it's supposed to be eating fish. I don't yeah, know. Just, it's supposed to be in the water all the time. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, that's it's, like it kind of hangs out in the like, water. He comes out. Maybe like sometimes he could, but he didn't. Well, it's like crocodiles. I mean, they walk around, but they usually just chill in the water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like, to me, that like drove me nuts yeah. for a long, long time. And it just harbored this deep, like, I can't believe you ruined my franchise with that <laughs> that uh, that horrible movie. And then now I watch it and I'm like, oh, like, yeah, like I'm you know much what? more forgiving than I used to be on that yeah, movie. I, I remember being kind of let down as a kid because yeah. I wanted T-Rex again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And it did feel like even when I watched it, I was just like, man, something feels off about this. Like, I don't hate it. Yeah. Uh, it's become like it was my favorite sequel for a while just because like Lost World took itself too seriously to a fault. Yeah. And this one darker. is this one is not taking itself seriously. Yeah. So it's like and that's the problem. We explained in uh, our, maybe our Jurassic World review. The problem is Jurassic Park is so goddamn good, but it kind of said everything it needed to say. Yeah. So you, you probably shouldn't do a sequel, but they obviously were going to. Uh, yeah. And it's just like none of them really have anything to say. Yeah. It's well, just the second fun. one, the second one tried to do this hunters versus gatherer thing. And it's like, yeah, but your good guys are the bad guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um fucking uh people were like, oh, why didn't they bring um what's his face back for the sequels? The guy who played Nick Van Owen, Vince Vaughn. Yeah. It's like, oh, probably because his character's in jail forever. <laughs> Because he took the bullets out of Roland's gun, so the T-Rex made it to the city and ate everyone. Like, he's probably, like, in prison. <laughs> um, yeah, but Jurassic Park 3, you're right, it has no script. And it is all over the place. It has no third act, really. They clearly didn't really know how to end that movie, yeah. but it is, it's it a fun... It abruptly ends. The military's yeah. here. <laughs> and here's the thing, here's the thing. That's another issue with Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is so good. Mm -hmm. People forget that other dinosaur movies aren't very good <laughs> like like i'm trying to think how many good non-jurassic park dinosaur movies have you seen like maybe king kong 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the King Kong movies would probably yeah. be a, a good word. I mean, I look, I love the Carnosaur um, trilogy. Oh yeah, Carnosaur. I love Carnosaur, trilogy. but I'm I'm not about to say they're works of art. Yeah, I mean, there's. I'm trying to think of like what other dinosaur movies even exist that aren't like you know Asylum. You know, yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure there are like good ones. There's like yeah. more like classic ones, but those aren't like realistic dinosaurs. Yeah. But like we're not going to come on and no. try and claim that like Hugh the Winged Serpent is like anything <laughs> worth watching. But like. <laughs> It's like I I don't know, man. I love Q the Wing Serpent. Yeah, it's like you have that, and then you've got like Theodore Rex, which is oh, like oh god, <laughs> another movie I'd love to come on and chat about. It was funny, I actually. Um, I made Clayton watch it for the movie dumpster episode. Oh, I wasn't man. on the episode. I'm like, yeah, I gotta show you this. Uh, we could probably cover that at some point. But yeah, so if you think about it, it's like, all right, well, already making a Jurassic Park sequel is hard. Yeah. And also, dinosaur movies don't really have the best track record of being the best. Yeah. There's good ones, but I think. You have yeah. to find like the cast and the characters that fit no. them. And I make actually it don't actually mind work. the characters too much in this. They kind of work to an extent. Yeah. I feel like again, a lot of it was just sort of made up as they went, so they yeah. changed. Like knowing that they were all playing very different people earlier script in yeah. earlier scripts, so, like it yeah. makes more sense. Yeah, uh, but it's it worked. Yeah. Jurassic Park three. The cast isn't the problem there. Yeah, they're doing no, their no. best they can with what there is available, and the effects are really good in there. Absolutely, I know some people complain about the CGI. There is some dodgy CGI in it, but a lot of people don't know. There's it, it has some of like out of the first three, it has some of the worst CGI and some of the best CGI, and like sometimes you can't even tell. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just a fun like it's a big chase movie, and yeah. I get it. There's not a lot of story or plot. Doesn't need to be. But after the second one, kind of told this like really flawed story. I'm like, I'm kind of okay with it. But I, I enjoy it as a fun chase movie. Yeah. I I well, okay. Did 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 was your childhood ruined when the T Rex got killed by the Spinosaurus? I mean, I was devastated, but I also knew that I'm like, well, this isn't this isn't like the Jurassic Park T Rex. This is probably the little one from the Lost World who's like an idiot anyway. Yeah. So like Yeah, people say that and then uh other people, people are like, upset. No, it's not the baby. I mean, and I'm they, like, they've yeah, come out be. and tried to argue. I think I forget who actually made the statement, but they're like, No, it's not the baby Rex. It's a different T Rex. Don't worry about it. Like, <laughs> it's like and you know, I don't care if it's the baby Rex. And it's I, just I like, well, how many how many how many Rexes are on that island? That's what and I'm so saying. Like, like it had to be- like if, it, if it's a juvenile T Rex and it's like only a few years after the Lost World, yeah. it's probably the baby. Which, like, yeah. again, who cares? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Did and you see some of the uh, the puppet stuff that they released in I recent d- I, years? Not recently, but like I remember, I watched all that stuff. Like I said, I grew up. Jurassic Park was like my jam growing oh, when, up. So when these DVDs came out with all the special features, I watched them. Oh no, I've I've watched. If there's a special feature for these movies, yeah. I've seen it. <laughs> um, um, I just I'm still over here butthurt that we didn't get a uh, commentary track on the first Jurassic World DVD Blu-ray. So oh, I'm like, yeah. I remember like I immediately put it in the I watched the movie like four times in theaters and I was like commentary commentary yeah. where is it no. <laughs> and I was just so <laughs> mad um, oh. and I like never watch those but for these I do yeah <laughs> it I know originally it wasn't planned to be uh, Isla Sorna it was originally meant to be a completely separate like, yeah. sight see or something yeah so the plants the plant life Mm. is so drastically different because oh. they filmed it somewhere else well, than because, the Lost World. So because L- Lost World, I think they cut costs. They filmed it in California, so there's <laughs> Redwoods. Yeah. And then and in like, Jurassic Park 3, they filmed it somewhere else. It's like, all right, well, now we're back to like the Pacific Island. Which <laughs> was like, f- would be fine if it didn't look so drastically different. Yeah. And like, I loved the Redwoods because it felt like a, you know what? I think I liked that in Lost World because mm. it felt like a different island than the first movie. Yeah. And then when Jurassic Park 3 happened, it felt more like the first movie island, but it was no. set on the second movie island, and that always just drove me nuts for yeah. some reason. And then now they've chalked it up to, well, they're on the northern side of the island, and Lost yeah. World happened on the southern side Do- of the uh, island. Doctor, Doctor- that's why the raptors look different, too. Don't worry about it. Well, remember, they, they did bring <laughs> plants back in the first movie, so a, a Doctor Wu was genetically engineering <laughs> yeah. trees, yeah. obviously. Yeah, and it's just the whole thing was just like, uh, yeah, it's a different half of the island. Don't yeah. No question. That's why the raptors are do different. You, That's why the plants are different. Do you it's like fine. the concept of a site B? I never liked it. I I do. I do you love do? the concept of a site B. I think it works because it's like it's an island that's only X amount of miles away. Yeah. It's like it might it might have made more sense in the books. It yeah. doesn't and never jived for the films. I mean, to me, it makes sense as an idea of like, all right, so this is like where the sausage is made. And then yeah. we send it to the, the, the store where you present the sausage. Yeah. So it's like but the, the problem I have with that is. The first movie spent so much time showing us how the sausage got made. And then the second movie was habit just like, oh, I'm just a liar. 
I just, I just lie. I, I everything like, I said was a lie. <laughs> I understand having like some of that stuff happening yeah. now on the theme park side to show people how it's done during the tours. But you notice yeah. that's only like a room. Yeah. It's not a very big space to do as no. much as they claim they'd be doing. Yeah. So like it would make sense to have like a warehouse or like a secondary island to do mm. a lot of that stuff. I mean, realistically, it probably would have made more sense to just do it on another part of the island. Yeah. Um, but also. They could have just went. Because, again, the reason Site B was made is because mm -hmm. the the island in the book got firebombed, yeah. but that didn't happen in the movie. So you could have just put it back on new blood. I think they wanted to avoid everything that they ended up going back to do in Jurassic world where they yeah. didn't want to have to go to the ruins of the park and yeah. explain all of that, which I, they still ended up in like the ruins of leftover buildings that were also abandoned for yeah. some reason. Well, Storm. It, what was it? In the lost world. They said there was like a hurricane that like, there was a hurricane that knocked out everything. Yeah. And like the dinosaurs went, like went crazy. And then, Supposedly, it was like the same hurricane as like was hitting during Jurassic Park or something. Oh, that happened so, at the same time. Supposedly. What did you think about our, our raptors there with their feathery mohawks? You know, I liked the idea of differentiating the males. Yeah. Um. So like, I liked the the quills uh, being on there and giving them sort of feathers. Uh, I think mm. it worked really well to make them look unique. Yeah. I liked that the colors were different, but again, it it's one of those things where it drove me nuts because I'm like, this is the island we've already been to. Why do they look so drastically mm. different? Which has been fixed it's been in the, fixed. In the material been, since gone back they've since fixed. gone back and written a reasoning behind the thing that drove me nuts yeah. so like now i'm like oh they're pretty cool they've got a little more accurate even though they're still featherless uh yeah. so it's it's a well, whole that was thing. the thing they so people were learning that dinosaurs a lot of them either had like feathers feathers yeah, or yeah. proto that's the thing when we when they say dinosaurs had feathers it, it's not always like bird like feathers like yeah, that yeah. proto feather kind of fur stuff yeah. Um, I know recently there was, uh, not the T-Rex itself, but a, a relative of the T-Rex. They found like it's crushed skeleton and they had the feather imprint. So it's like, all right, that one had feathers. So th this is 2001. They're still trying to incorporate that idea and audiences who weren't up to date. Cause yeah. I don't know if you know this, but when you're an adult, sometimes you, you lose track of what's going on with dinosaurs. So when you see a feather, you're like, what the hell is that? Yeah. Some people. <laughs> Some people, not us. Not we're us. cool. No, we're uh, <laughs> not the cool people. And I remember people getting really mad at the feathers on the dinosaurs. They got really mad at the spinosaurus. And it's new and different. Get it yeah. out of here. But I love that they're just hating like an animal that existed. They're like, I hate the spinosaurus. Like, you could just say you didn't like the movie. I don't know if you got a, like an entire species that existed. <laughs> I've never seen so many people have a beef with a dino an animal that's been dead for millions of years. And then the the last thing people hate about Jurassic Park three, they split up Alan and yeah, and uh, what's her face Ellie. Ellie, yeah, no, and that was disappointing because yeah. like the fact that they brought Ellie back just to not actually bring her back also yeah. sort of just like always like bugged me a little bit. I, I do like the kind of like they they turn the tables, but it's yeah. just like all right, well this doesn't really it doesn't really amount to. I guess her husband is part of the government, which is how she's able to get the military. Yeah. There. I guess her husband's cool. Yeah. But like. He seems nice. Well, then, especially at the end of the first Jurassic Park, you have that arc of like, well, Alan's really good with kids, apparently, even yeah. though he never knew he wa like liked kids. Yeah. Now he's like totally cool with it. Well, that's another thing that I, I know recently Lara Dern was like, yeah, it's kind of crazy. My character was so young dating this older guy. And it's like, well, that's because there is the age difference in the book. But in the book, they're not together. Like she has a fiance. There's yeah. like a hint that he might be into yeah. her, but he kind of like. Yeah, it's never really. Even it's one of those things like even if he's into her, he knows he doesn't have a shot, so he's not yeah. entertaining it. And then the movie changed that. It's like a professor ending up with his intern. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they never like clearly say they're dating in the first movie. They're like, I'm yeah. probably gonna get in trouble. <laughs> they're like, be. they're like, yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> don't worry about it but I remember people getting <laughs> real upset about that I was confused like that's a weird choice but I yeah really I mean it didn't really bug me because I'm just like yeah. yeah that's like a natural course of events to happen I mean you yeah. know like you know people grow apart yeah. things happen relationships don't always last like that yeah and like honestly that was probably the most realistic thing that in this entire the franchise most the most realistic of aspect of the entire franchise is that like yeah she, they, like, the heroes she, like, didn't end up together for life who figured what, what was she uh she was like 23 24 in the first mm -hmm. movie so, like, yeah i which i had no idea about until recently yeah. i just assumed like she must be in her 30s this is fine <laughs> i'm like i was uh i don't know i want to tell you right now i'm not currently seeing the person i was seeing in my early 20s yeah. so that's that's yeah. realistic <laughs> that's realistic some of them are married with kids like yeah it's a little which is exactly you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i guess i'm alan grant now <laughs> um 
Yeah, so Jurassic Park 3, it came out. People were mixed on it. I guess it did okay. It, yeah, it didn't. It, um, it didn't really. I think people were kind of done with the franchise at that point. Yeah. And keep in mind, as that came out, mm -hmm. so many other movies and like since Jurassic Park were trying to compete with Jurassic Park. So you have like Anaconda, Lake Placid. You have all these other like big kind of monsters. Literally my movies. list of favorite movies. So uh, it's, yeah. like, it's like the movies that yeah. came out and that I was like, oh, thank God people are giving Stan Winston work. So <laughs> the Relic. I love The Relic. The Relic. The Relic's good. The, the, I uh, could do a whole thing on that. I like, did geez. a video on The Relic. Well, I'm uh, talking about just like the, the creatures and yeah. stuff like that. Like yeah. Anaconda, like Placid, Deep Blue Sea had practical effects, which is like yes. to date still my favorite shark movie outside of Jaws. Yes. Uh, because well, I of mean, the effects. I mean, there's not much. Uh, what was it? The the podcast. How did this get made? When it was still yep. when it was still good. They had Paul F. Tompkins on. And <laughs> yeah. he, he covered Deep Blue Sea, and he had the funniest thing I've ever heard him say. He's like, "By the way, what's the uh, record on shark movie? Still just the one good one." And I'm like, "Oh my god, that's fucking." I'm like, because <laughs> I I start even shark movies I like. I'm like, are they good? I'm like, nah, it's just that one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. So Jurassic Park goes away. Yeah, for a really long time. It goes, still it goes extinct. Yeah, it still exists in some toys. It still exists in the theme parks. Um, I did love the Islands of Adventure, the Jurassic Park world. I've never actually been, and it drives, yeah. me, it drives me nuts because I know that there's literally just a miniature Jurassic Park there. And yeah. Like, I need to go. I hope it's still... I think California got rid of their visitor center and they ruined it, but I yeah. think Universal still has the proper visitor center. Mm-hmm. If they get rid of that, I'm going to be really pissed because I don't care about the Visitor Center in the new movies. Yeah. I like the classic Visitor Center. Well, I know the Cal the Hollywood one got redone to do Jurassic World, yeah. but the one in I Florida has remained park I think, distinctly. I think the ride in Florida was updated to be more like World, yeah. but I think everything else is kind of park. They used to have, I think they shut it down, but they used to have like a big animatronic Triceratops and mm -hmm. the girl will be telling you about it. That yeah. was really cool. No, that's come and gone a few times, uh, yeah. but I think it's actually like gone, gone now. I think it's one of those, like, um, the animatronic was just too hard to keep yeah, up they, with. Yeah, they've got other stuff now. They actually, I think they have a tri uh, stegosaurus that just walks around. Like it's yes, life size. and they have so a triceratops too. Yeah. yeah, so they have all that stuff. I'm yeah. I'm a big theme park nerd, even though I don't ever go to theme parks. <laughs> I've never been to Universal. I've been to Disney World once when I was 12. <laughs> but I know like absurd amount of history. I would love to go places. back to Universal. That was my favorite to go to. Yeah. Everyone, everyone here goes to Disney all the time, and I'm like, I don't. I just want to go. You know what it is? Mm. Is for me, it's that I'm still heartbroken that I never got to go on the Jaws ride. Oh. And I know they still have it in Japan, so like yeah. one day I'll go. <laughs> and my wife wants to go to the Japan one because they have Sailor Moon the ride there, yeah. so she'll be like well, ecstatic. Well, spoiler, so it is fun, but it's not the best ride. Um, but it's a fun experience, but even when you're on it, sometimes the shark doesn't work, which I guess gives you the idea of what it was like which to Which is like a movie. running gag, so it's, yeah. you know. I remember uh, the one time, like, the guy's like, here it comes, and the shark just never came out of the water, and I'm like, He's like, oh, I guess he's not there. <laughs> I guess he's sleeping. Uh, but yeah. I mean, the Universal still has all that stuff going on for Jurassic Park in yeah. Islands of Adventure, which is like, yeah, I have to get there eventually. To I know, I want to go back. Jurassic I want to go back. But bad. like, but yeah, the so it went away. There's some comics that they came out with. Yeah, the one where uh, good, Dieter but... came back. <laughs> And Dieter Stark comes back as like this mutilated corpse dude, and I'm like, all right, that's dumb. Well, yeah, well, they had they had so much other stuff that happened that was like side material. Like they had yeah. the games that have come out since then. They've had like numerous comics. They had multiple animated series that never came to fruition, like the, the mm. Chaos Effect, which had like all yeah. those, all the hybrids and stuff yeah. that eventually like became a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then I mean Spielberg went on to do other things. Sure. Um but he's nothing like, fun, but he's dumb <laughs> things. <laughs> he did like he did his War of the Worlds remake, uh, which I said in the one video I like I like for the most part. The ending's pretty bad. Yeah. For the most part it's fine. Um and then he ended up producing the Transformers movie. So he was making money from a lot of other franchises. Mm -hmm. But I guess around twenty fifteen 2014, they started. 2013, they probably started announcing all these franchises were coming back. Yeah, which I, knowing what I know now, I wish a lot of them didn't. But um, <laughs> so he's like, well, if they're bringing Star Wars back, I'm gonna bring Jurassic Park back. Uh, and he got. I mean, that's his Star Wars. Effectively. Yes, <laughs> and he got Colin Trevorrow to come back or, or come and do it. Uh, and again, we have a full review of this. But um, I was very mixed on the first Jurassic World when it came out. Mm -hmm.
Uh, what do you, what do you think of the movie? Jurassic World is probably my favorite sequel outside of the Lost World, which okay. is like honestly depending. I mean, Lost World has the nostalgia for me, the nostalgia factor for me for being like why I like it more. Yeah, but like depending on the day of the week you catch me, I might like might say Jurassic World is my favorite sequel. Yeah, because for me it was nostalgia. It hit all the right nostalgic beats without retreading it exactly. Mm. And I know people say, oh, it's just a effectively a sequel slash remake of the first movie. Yeah, but. It- it is doing something clever where it's making fun of that concept. Well, that and not just that, but it's kind of, uh, in a sense, is a little bit meta because yes. they took an extinct franchise and brought back a clone of it. Yeah, and that's the plot. And of then Jurassic they went Park. and they went and they went. <laughs> they tried to go bigger. <laughs> yeah, but that's essentially the plot yes. for Jurassic Park. So it's like the idea of Jurassic World being sort of a copy of a dead thing brought back. Yes, in a new way. Yes. It's exactly what Jurassic Park was meant to be. So to me, that always like hit all the right buttons. Mm. And I love the fact that they explored the old park. They went to the ruins of the original park yeah. and like characters. Uh, but like, it breaks continuity with the Jurassic Park, the telltale game. Cause in the game, the T-Rex breaks the doors off the, the yeah. visitor center, but then the doors are back. And I, I wrote Spielberg an angry letter. I was like, the <laughs> I love game the, is canon. I love you the bro- telltale game, but it's, it's officially not considered canon. I thought from what? people, <laughs> and I, like, I wish it was, but like they've actually gone on to other things that they now deem canon. Yeah. Um, that are, uh, like that also conflict with it. Yeah. Like they had, uh, the true Dom was like a huge thing in that game. Yes. Um, and they since did Jurassic world, the tour, which is like a live tour that's actually coming back right now. So check, I mean, not to advertise, but like, yeah. you know, check your uh, schedule. Maybe it's coming to your city. Who knows? <laughs> but like, I know I was lucky enough. It hit Philly right before the pandemic hit. Yeah. So I got to go. And they announced, like, I talked to them beforehand because I do, I'm press, I do journalism mm-hmm. stuff. So I got to go before the whole show and, like, talk to the people behind the show and ride around in the actual gyrosphere, which oh, apparently cool. even Chris Pratt hasn't got to do because they only made, like, <laughs> three real ones and they're yeah. all for the show. Yeah. The ones in the movies are all fake. Yeah. So, like, they got the, they I got the to drive too. around the gyrosphere in, like, the, the whatever <laughs> center. I forget what it's even. So what you're saying is you're cooler than Chris Pratt. Yes. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> But I got to drive around the driver's sphere and talk to these people and they're like, yeah, it's officially considered part of canon. So like these events Mm. that take place are like leading up to things that are coming or like referencing things that are happening. And they have a Trudon in that. And it's like very drastically different from the games. Mm. But like they're trying to make it like a thing. And I think it may end up tying into other stuff later. If it it still is considered something canon and they don't just throw it out because nobody saw that one before the pandemic. (laughs) Um, Speaking of canon. Sorry, uh, Jurassic World, it kind of ignores two and three to a point. It doesn't say they don't exist, and yeah. there are like little references, but yeah. it kind of did what Force Awakens did, where it's like, we're not going to linger on the ones that people don't like too much. Well, it's it didn't disacknowledge them. It's it didn't, that, but, but they it, didn't. Yeah. It wasn't until the sequels were like, oh, yeah, all that shit exists. It's well, like, it's okay. like they didn't have to address them, I they guess, because like the events of Isla Sorna had like nothing to do with the park at that point. Yeah. It was a completely separate island. I did. I did like that. I'm, I'm guessing Ms. Ronnie brought out engine because they were being sued left and right yeah, by everyone. That's exactly what happened. Um, and I, I did like, so what I like in the movie, I like the functioning theme park. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I liked what they were doing with the dinosaurs. I like the overall story, not so much the plot. The characters are the weakest part for me. Yeah. Ms. Ronnie's the only character I like and he dies. Yeah. Like, I'm like, like really, like really aggressively. And like, he, he like hints at it the whole time. Yeah. Like every time you see him, he's just like, oh, I'm going to fly the helicopter. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And I it's, liked, <laughs> um, I liked the, the younger kid cause he reminded me of me running oh, yeah, around Ty Jurassic Simpsons. Park at Universal Studios. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, I like that. The next T-Rex feeding will begin in 10 uh, I just wasn't into Claire. She does have a character arc. She I'll does. give her that. She does. She has more of an arc than anybody yeah, in Chris the franchise, Pratt, I think. This is when Chris Pratt's like, I'm not going to be the funny guy anymore. I'm going to be a tough guy. But then it, they were filming it before Guardians came out. Mm-hmm. And then Guardians comes out and they're like, oh shit, we should have made him a fun guy because he is a boring protagonist. So the thing with Chris Pratt for me is that mm. I, I loved Chris Pratt for like a long time. I still don't, I don't have a problem with him. I know everyone mm. likes to hate him, but it's like, yeah. uh, I have no problem with Chris Pratt. I still like yeah. most of his stuff. He works really well when he's the the idiot trying to be Indiana Jones. Yeah. But not so well when he actually is Indiana Jones, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I guess it worked in a few movies, like Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I- at least in these movies, I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not buying this character. I'm yeah. sorry. And, and I know he's supposed to be the most amazing. And they try to fix it in the later installments. Yeah. They even added a little bit of humor in this one. Yeah. Um, I, I like the idea of trying to train the raptors. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. 
and how it like turns it, that's on the them. most really that's another again it's a really realistic thing that yeah. i would see if this stuff existed no. that's exactly the kind of thing that the no. military would be throwing money at them to make that a thing yeah the problem with the movie mm-hmm. and like other than the characters and whatnot yeah. Uh, t- the visual effects are so bad for yeah. the first two thirds. Well, they only had one practical effect in the entire movie, and yeah. it's literally a, a, a head that lays yeah. there. It's the Apatosaurus head. Yeah, and I, I think it was fine. Like, I think it did what it had to do. Yeah. Uh, I thought, I didn't realize, I, what I thought was going to happen was the Indominus was, like, going to tear stuff, st- stuff up and let, like, all these dinosaurs out. Mm-hmm. But it only really lets out the the ter- pterodons and whatnot. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I want it like stegosaurus running around and people going ah, but it's yeah. We only we only got that one scene. I'm like, all yeah. right. Well, I thought the movie was gonna be all that, but yeah, whatever. I mean, but like, I don't know. I think it worked. I did like that they they did did a second attempt of the the bird cage or whatnot. Yeah, because that is in the first book and they never mm-hmm. got. To, that's the thing. They are still mining stuff from the first book. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, like the. The Indominus, like, camouflaging. There's a baby raptor that does that in the first book. Is it and the then, first book or is it the, that's the... I know the Carnotaurs did it in the, the second book. The Carnotaurs do it, and then there's a baby raptor that does it in the first book. But yeah, then the Carnotaurs do it. Mm-hmm. So they're kind of taking that. Um, the ending, uh, I, I talked about it. So the <laughs> logical ending for the movie. Yeah. What the movie was building up toward, it's like, all right. And talk about character arcs. Uh, Owen has this whole arc where he's trying to like be the leader of the Raptors and work with them. Mm-hmm. And then they turn on him and then he gets them to work with him. And the real ending of that movie should have been like, he finally gains the trust of the Raptors and they coordinate and they push the Indominus toward the thing to get eaten. Yeah. But then someone said, no, we're making a bunch of T-Rex toys. Just figure out a way to get the T-Rex in there. And it's like, Okay. The T-Rex that we haven't even touched on this the whole movie. The T-Rex that we've had one scene with, we didn't even see it. It's like, okay, well, he is going to do that with the raptors, but then they're all going to die. <laughs> and then we're going to pull out a completely different T-Rex that no one has any relationship to, except for the audience, yeah. because it is the original T-Rex. It is. the It's Rexy from the original and then, film. And then Tony in the theater is going to be like, oh, God, please don't kill my childhood T-Rex in yeah, front of me. It's literally the it's, it's Luke Skywalker moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm mad that the movie, and I mentioned this on our video, I'm mad that the movie tricked me into caring about this dumbass dinosaur fight at the end. My other favorite thing is that, like, I swear the first time I watched it, it happened. Yeah. But when I saw this in theaters, Jurassic World, like, the Mosasaurus rips the thing into the ocean. The T-Rex and the Raptor look at each other. They do like a little, you know, they're accepting nod yeah. of acknowledgement. Like, yeah, we're cool. Don't worry about yeah. it. And then the Raptor looks at the camera and gives a thumbs up and winks. <laughs> which is <laughs> like, which is impressive. It, it, it may as well have thrown sunglasses on yeah. first. Like, I thought it, it was Fonzieing me. So it was actually, like, <laughs> actually, the newest movie, mm-hmm. I made a joke about that with Blue at the end with yeah. my goddaughter. I'm like, like, I really wanted her to be like, thanks. It's like, yeah. and I wanted Owen to be like, she gave me a thumbs up. She doesn't have thumbs. That's impressive. <laughs> Before we get to Fallen Kingdom, oh, sorry. I do want to touch back on, like, I know the lead characters are all kind of like, eh. Like, Claire gets an arc, at least. Yeah. The kids are fun. Yeah. Chris Pratt is Chris Pratting everywhere. Mm. Uh, but I do like a lot of the the background characters that they don't really touch on much. Like, I really enjoyed uh, Lowry and uh, was okay. uh, Jake Johnson. And, like, I liked Hoskins, who was a good villain to me, yeah. at least. Like, he felt... He was cartoonish. He was cartoonish in all yeah. the right ways. He wasn't, yeah. like... Uh, over, he wasn't too over the top, but he chewed yeah. enough scenery to like, get your attention. And like, mm. I was a little bummed that they offed him so quick because I felt like he would have been a great overarching villain to sort of mm. carry through. But of course, you have to. Oh, and I forgot this. that a lot of people who haven't read the book, and even I, because I didn't read the book until like a few years back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know, I'm a terrible fan. I'm sorry. Uh, books are for nerds. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, so I was thrown off when they brought B.D. Wong back. I'm like, I know he became a big actor after the first movie, but yeah. he was just science guy. <laughs> and it's like, now he's a mad scientist. And then I read the book. I'm like, oh yeah, he is kind of an asshole scientist. This is he actually was, he kind was of always tr- the guy. Yeah. It's like, this is actually kind of truer than what the first movie was depicting. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I yeah. love that they brought him back because yeah. I was, again, in the book, he was such a huge character. And like, I, I can say this stuff now cause it's been. It's probably been 10 years since I've read the book yeah. uh, at this point. I've got my first edition, like, original print from mm. when I was a kid. Like, I definitely have the hardbacks, and I read them all when I was way yeah, too young you, to be reading those. Yeah, but do you have those. Carnosaur? Don't have Carnosaur. I will say, they are reprinting it soon. Oh, snap. You're going to want to get that. Absolutely. Because these books are so expensive. I was at, I was able to get this for, like, 60 bucks. And, like, Clayton and other people said they've looked it up, and it's, like, $600. I'm like, what the fuck happened? How did, did I just get it? Did I buy it from someone who didn't know? Probably. How did I get lucky? 
So yeah, Fallen Kingdom comes out, and I'm like, okay, I'm kind of excited. I was in a nostalgic mood for Jurassic Park. Uh, I liked a lot of the material they were making for it. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I'm not a big toy guy, but I went out and bought the little like micro like Hot Wheels stuff and whatnot. Yeah, I was yeah, having yeah, fun. Cool. I got them. Uh, I had just shown my goddaughters the first Jurassic World and they loved it, so I was like getting excited. I was getting excited to show them, and I went out with my sister. Spoiler: My sister is born on June 11th, so she's one year older than Jurassic Park. <laughs> and to uh, torture her every year, I always wish Jurassic Park a happy birthday. <laughs> uh, so we all went out together and we saw it. And everyone was telling me it's awful. It's the last Jedi of Jurassic Park movies. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that means nothing to me. I'm like, I love the last Jedi. So yeah. to me, it's like, that's like, I, that would have been a great thing. If that I, was the if thing. I, that was the thing. The like, I, I'm one of those guys who like, doesn't like last Jedi, but I don't complain about it all the time. Yeah. I mean, Cause I went, I went into the, I went into Jurassic Park with kind of an open mind. I went into the new Star Wars movie with super low expectations yeah. and it still managed to disappoint me. Uh, but I'm not one of those, like I saw Lost World. And, I mean, last Jedi, I'm like, I see what it was trying to do. It's not mm -hmm. working for me, and it, it, it could have been better, but there are people. And we did the worst Star Wars episode where people are just like, it's the worst thing ever. I'm like, all right, calm down. Yeah. So I see Fallen Kingdom, and yeah, it starts off like, oh, they're going to try and take the dinosaurs off the island. They're assholes, whatnot. And I'm like, all right, the island stuff's fun, but I've seen it. And then it turns into Resident Evil, and I'm like, oh, I'm in. Boom. I'm in. It is my <laughs> least favorite entry in the entire series. It is the only, and I, it's funny, I said this. It's the movie in the series I've watched the least and not yeah. because it's the semi newest. Yes. Uh, it's because I just don't ever like revisiting it. I, yeah. as you mentioned earlier with, you don't make me watch my childhood die. Yeah. It literally makes you me watch my childhood die. Sorry. It like oh, watching, the... not, not even like, not even talking about the Brachiosaurus, oh, okay. which is like heartbreaking. Like yeah. I don't want to cry at a CGI dinosaur. I absolutely did the first time I saw oh, it. Oh God, that was, that was heartbreaking. Uh, the reason I love Jurassic world so much is yeah. because they went back to the original Island yeah. and you got to see the ruins of the original park. Yeah. And they like, they addressed that stuff and they talked about it. And to me, that was always like the coolest aspect of that movie was that like they took and they realized well, Hammond's I, dream. I kind of like while also referencing the mistakes that Hammond made. I'm still mad they didn't go find a dead raptor in the freezer or something. <laughs> oh like, yeah, which would have. Oh, been. even Camp Cretaceous didn't do that because yeah. they go there in Camp Cretaceous. Yeah, they do. They do go there in Camp yeah. Cretaceous, and, and uh, they don't. I love so much that they do so much of that in Camp Cretaceous. Yeah. Like they really do just investigate. Camp Cretaceous gives me everything I wanted from Jurassic World sequels. Yes, I but, like. That's what I want. I don't need to watch. Yeah. I know it's for kids and yeah. I know that it's like skews younger and it's it's safe and it's fun. Yeah. Uh, but to me, it's like, man, this is everything I always wanted from Jurassic Park. That's stuff. that's why I watch. And it is a little too geared toward kids for me. I was expecting more something like along the lines of like Star Wars Rebels. Yeah. Where it's like multiple different people. And like this one's specifically kids. But like, yeah, I watch it purely because we didn't have a Jurassic Park cartoon. So it's fun. To we see almost how they're did doing. Like four times. We almost did. But <laughs> this is the first time we got it. So why I like Fallen Kingdom. I, I was kind of getting sick of the island. I'm sorry. I'm kind of getting I'm sick. Never, I'm the opposite. I like. I love the island. So for I'm me, I'm just it's saying. Like, like I have so many dinosaur movies of them in jungles and stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm. let's see. Let's see something else. Um, then I get where you're coming from. I can yeah. understand how that would upset you. Uh, but also, I'm thinking back to the first movie. Like the really, I like that this movie has like a horror feel to it in the the later half. Yeah. And I'm thinking about like, yo, what was the really scary parts of the first one? Obviously, the T-Rex. Mm -hmm. But really, it's when the raptors kind of enter into the human environment. Yeah. Um, so I actually liked seeing it going around the mansion and whatnot. Yeah. I thought that was really, really cool to me. And I loved what it was building up to because it's like, all right, we kind of we've done this like four times. The only place you can really go because the whole thing is like, if we bring dinosaurs back, how will they interact with man? It's like, well, we already explained that. And we've been kind of dancing around. So the only thing you can really do is just let them out there and see what happens. Yeah. Which I'm glad this movie kind of built up to. And we'll talk about the next movie, but it's building up to not just other movies, which is yeah. why I like this. Um, but I like the horror feel to it. I love the effects in this. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, when p studios and people say, we use practical effects, what they mean to say is they CGI'd over practical effects, but since the practical effects were there, it looks so much better. Mm -hmm. So they have an animatronic T-Rex and you know, they digitally like move the arms a little bit better. They yeah. move the eyes a little bit better. And it's this perfect marriage because that, that previous movie, I'm like, God damn it. I hate all these effects. Yeah. But like the, in Fallen Kingdom, I will say yeah. as much as 
as much as I hate it, there's a lot of things to like about it. Like yeah. I like some of the ingredients. I just yeah. don't like the finish. And here's the thing with, with me. I'm just like, cause we're never going to get a really good serious movie in my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you might as well have fun and go stupid with it. And I I'm mean, like, ah, well, we got Buffalo build collected teeth. Ah, I'm in on that. We got to wait. We were auctioning off dinosaurs. I'm like that's fucking stupid. I love it. Yeah. So it, I like all the stuff that people hate in this just because I wasn't expecting anything. Like I was, just I like, mean, and like a lot of that stuff, I don't yeah. hate yeah. that stuff. Like, I think a lot of the things you're, you're talking about that you enjoy were yeah. things that were like good additions to it. And I yeah. think they all worked. Yeah. I think the idea of taking them back and auctioning them off worked. I just, for me, it's always going to leave this horrible taste in my <laughs> mouth that they felt the need to literally nuke the island with a volcano. Oh, so it's yeah. one, it's one thing to say, we're taking all the dinosaurs we can get and auctioning them off. And yeah. then that's a plot. Yeah. It's another thing to say, we're literally burning it to the ground so you, we can never go back and revisit this. <laughs> There's never going to be any exploration of the old park, of the old, the new old park. Yeah. There's never going to be any further exploration of the original, original park. Like, you're never going to see any of this stuff again. Mm. It's all been burned away. It's I think literally th cutting their legs off so they can't, yeah. you know, it's... And the, the, the reason I like that... Well, because one, it forces them to go in well, a new direction. One, Camp Cretaceous, they did all the things you were talking about. Yes, they did now. explore the park. Yeah, now, <laughs> now, I get at the time they did it, but because um, you think of like dinosaurs, dinosaur material you saw in your youth, you always saw like volcanoes going off with dinosaurs ruined and lava yeah. everywhere. Yeah, even though it's probably not the most real, I'm sure that happened at some point. It wasn't sure. happening as much as books were making it seem like Absolutely. it was happening. It's like quicksand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I did like that we got those visuals of like the everything's on fire and the dinosaurs are roaring and running around. I liked all that stuff. I did enjoy the stampede sequence where everything's like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, yeah. oh, fuck, oh, fuck. I feel and bad like, for when they fall off the cliff. Like, oh, yeah. like well, where are they going? Like, they're yeah. literally just dead at that point. So yeah. it's like. I guess the flying ones, depending <laughs> on how long they can coast. Yeah, I mean. Um, or maybe they could, you know, just swim in the water for a while till the lava cools down. Like, <laughs> I don't know. But like, yeah. I mean, you just see them all just like running like, oh, shit. Like, what are we going to do here? And yeah. like, it just. It was a lot going on. It was no. really interesting to see some of that stuff. And I love that they somehow use this, this opportunity to introduce new species. Yeah. Um, Cause it's like, why didn't we ever see any of these before? I mean, they weren't even name dropped previously. Yeah. Um, but like, I will say, um, it, 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 the movie does have problems. It gets clunky here and there. Mm -hmm. Like the T-Rex roars or runs away. And then it's in a cage. I'm like, Oh, so, so the bad guys, like, when the volcano go off, we're still with a cage going, I think the T-Rex is nearby. Like, that doesn't make any goddamn sense. No, it really doesn't. <laughs> and it's just, they're really just like, wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> like, they've got the chloroform ready at the cave. Um, and they're like... <laughs> but I honestly I honestly enjoy the second half more with all the mansion stuff. Uh, I, yeah. I get what they were going for with the Maisie girl, mm -hmm. how she was a clone. Mm -hmm. So she feels connected to the dinosaurs. Yeah. I think they didn't explain... There's a blink and you miss it sort of thing. They didn't explain clearly to most audiences like what was happening at the end. Yeah. Because people were like, wait, she only let out like 30, 40. How are they everywhere? It's like, well, no, they showed the embryos and they showed people. They should have had a scene instead of showing us the embryos getting away. They should have had a scene like showing people hatching their own dinosaurs because that would have made people would have got like they would have connected it more. Yeah. I wasn't too sold on the Indoraptor. I thought he looked really creepy. Yeah. It was I just like a that tiny Indominus Rex. I like that it was glitching the whole time because it yeah. wasn't like ready. They keep saying like, this is a prototype. It's not ready. And it's just like, ah, it's like twitching and whatnot. Yeah. It's it's like clicking its, it's claw tweak. to get attention from <laughs> other raptors that don't exist. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think for me, what sells me on it is I love the return to the old effects, even mm. if they're enhanced digitally. Uh, I love the horror stuff. And I just love that it was weird. It was weird and wacky. It was fine I, and fun, as we say on the show. <laughs> I like I liked the some elements of it. I, I really, totally get people not liking it though. I'm like, yeah, I, mean, I, get I that. Uh, my biggest thing is always that what, the big. It's such a major part of the movie that yeah. like just ruins the whole. Like I just sit mm. there like pouting the rest of the film. Like I can't even get in. You're like it. people with J.J. Abrams Star Trek. And I, I, I love Vulcan, those too. But it's like <laughs> when they blew a Vulcan and yeah. people were like, "What? <laughs> like yeah. why did you do?" And that? like I. I don't know what it is. There's something about that. No matter wh how good the rest of the movie ends up being, good yeah. or bad, I'm just like sitting there the whole time sulking. Like, I can't believe it. The, the weird retcon and, with Hammond, how he had a partner, which yeah. he had in the book. It was not the same character. Uh, it's, it's, there it's was like workable. weird retcons, but like where this kind of succeeds, where I think. I feel like the, if they brought up Lockwood a movie earlier, it would have worked yeah, better. Yeah. But like. Or, what was it in the book? It was Atherton in the book? Yeah. yeah. Um, but what I, I explained this with Clayton in our commentary track, available on Patreon. Uh, what I like about like Fallen Kingdom, I mean, it is weird, but like 
It doesn't do for me other than blowing up the park, which worked for you, which mm -hmm. I mean, didn't work for you. Um, it doesn't do anything like, like, you know how they brought Luke Skywalker back and he's like, he hates the Jedi now and he's angry and he's this grumpy old man and the Jedi were never good because they're factoring in the prequels. Yeah. And it's just like, well, that just annoys fans. And then like the new Star Wars movies are telling you that all your heroes are assholes. <laughs> like even the solo movie, it's like all droids are slaves. It's like, oh, well now I'm thinking... I don't want to think Luke Skywalker is a slave owner. That makes me feel bad. The, the new Jurassic <laughs> Park movies don't do anything weird. I mean, they are. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, whatever. Uh, but the new Jurassic Park movies don't do anything kind of like that. And the example I came up with, like, there wasn't a scene where they're like, did you know that John Hammond used Nazi science from Project Paperclip to bring the dinosaurs back? They didn't do anything stupid like that. That would have yeah. like completely broke me. I would yeah. have been like, oh, no, don't do anything like that. Come on. Yeah, it's not like we find out that like Lockwood is like secretly Air yeah. Lockwood. <laughs> they, didn't, they, didn't do, they didn't do something. I'm shh. I, I bet you these were conversations and someone finally stood up. But I 100% think that at some point someone said, well, what if we bring Sam Jackson back and he's just missing his arm? Because they didn't expect him to blow up into the actor that he was afterwards. <laughs> And I bet they, I, you know, someone was sitting there like, would that be too much? And someone went, he's going to come back. He's like all scarred up and stuff. Yeah. He's Nick. Fury. I'm glad they did it. Yeah. Cause we're already getting enough Sam Jackson, a million other. Movies, I am but glad I'm like, they, I'll, I'll get on that in a minute. Actually, yeah. I have something I want to come back to regarding okay. this, but okay. it's not yet. Yeah. And I actually, I didn't mind Malcolm in that movie. Cause that's how I imagined he would be. He's yeah. not going to that Island. Yeah. He's, he's just like, like, Oh no, let these things die. Like, yeah. he, like he's very much. He's like, I don't give a shit about these things. They're not supposed to exist. We're destroying the world. Yeah. Get rid of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and one last thing I'll say about Fallen Kingdom. The score was great. Michael Giacchino. I think that was like. He his... is probably my favorite uh, composer working today. Yes. He's he really is. good. And I think this out of the three that he did, I think mm -hmm. this one was like the best. Absolutely. Um, now that brings us to, we've been talking for like an hour. Uh, I might trip some of that down, but whatever. Whatever. Brings us to Jurassic World Dominion. Which is supposed to be a film that's supposed to tie up all six. They're trying to do the the Rise of Skywalker, where they're like, instead of just finishing off this trilogy, we're going to finish off all the previous films. Um, it turns out that the movie is a big commercial. Uh, that's my theory. Uh, it's, it's Batman and Robin for Jurassic. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how I describe it. So I no. saw this movie the other night, and I. Goddamn 40X theater, which I, I don't like those theaters. I hate them. I mentioned them many times. I hate them. But I told my cousin because I was taking her. Her daughters are my goddaughters. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, let's go see the new Jurassic Park. I'm like, she's like, I'll get the tickets. I'm like, don't get 40X. Yeah. And she says, what's 40X? And like an idiot, I told her. So we ended up seeing in 40X because she course. thought it'd be fun. Yeah. So I mean, if you're going to see this movie, if you're going to see a movie in 40X, this is probably a pretty well, good one. Well, here's it. the thing. Uh, luckily, I didn't have to sit in the chairs for the first 20 minutes because her youngest daughter was terrified. Not even from the beginning of the movie, because 40X, they'll give it like before the movie starts, they do like a thing that'll sample it. And this one was Jurassic Park theme. So it's like your seat's going to shake. And then a T-Rex roars at you and the seat's shaking. And she was just like, nah, she was just like, no, nah, I'm good. So uh, I'm, I stood up to finish my drink. <laughs> Meanwhile, my cousin, my other cousin's like this in her seat. So I'm like, I got to stand to drink this. And like the youngest daughter saw me stand up. So she just came with me. And then like the movie starts, like you want us to go sit down? She's like, no. So I'm like, I had to watch the first 20 minutes standing up, leaning against like a railing. <laughs> it's a two hour movie. <laughs> two, two and, and a half, half hour movie. movie. Um, yeah, but you know what? We, we all had a fine and fun time. Here's the thing. The movie is a clunky mess. Yeah. And I found out today, I was looking at a Sam Neill interview, according to him, I don't know how accurate it is, they filmed like a almost six hour movie. And this, I want that. Which, I want that so badly, you have no idea. I do too. I've, think about it like Lord of the Rings, all right? Yeah. They have extended versions. Absolutely. But other than one scene, Return of the King, the theatrical cuts work. They, they're serviceable. They work. They're fine. They yeah. work. Like you get the whole movie other than we mentioned other than Saruman disappearing. That's the only flaw there. Uh, but they work on their own and you can do this extended cut. Yeah. This movie, like you could tell like removing scenes or shortening scenes just made it like this frantic mess. Yeah. 
Uh, so I'm really excited for the hopeful eventual extended release, which won't be six hours probably yeah. still, but like, so I'll watch a four hour Jurassic World movie. So let's, let's just go in. So the basic story is not about what you want it to be. Well, I mean, <laughs> I get it. I get what they were going for. So the dinosaurs are causing problems. Are with, they? <laughs> they kind of are, you know, they're, like, they're throwing off the bat. Nature is struggling to deal with the dinosaurs. Uh, you find out Biosyn. They brought Biosyn back finally. Who's never even mentioned by name in the original yes, films. But Dodson was. Yeah. And Dodson's back. They got Dodson here. Not the original actor. Who, the diddler? <laughs> what? Do I need it? to cut that? No, no, you're good. Let's just say, <laughs> look, I don't want to get into it that much, but uh, we have a phrase on this show for people like him. And let's just say he's a cuties fan. Uh, if he had a Netflix, if he's allowed to have a Netflix account in prison, he's just playing that on repeat. Uh, so obviously they didn't bring him back. They brought yeah. Campbell Scott, who looks and acts nothing, nothing like, like him. him. But well, I'll get to that. So basically, yeah. Biosyn, and this is based off true stuff. Yeah. Uh, with like Monsanto or at least accusations. I I remember hearing stuff about this years ago. I haven't been up to date. So basically, they've made like a form of prehistoric locust to kind of kill their competitors, so they can be the only food source on Earth. Yeah. To basically control the earth yeah. or most of it. Uh, but even though BD Wong, <laughs> be, Dr. Wu should be like, hey, every time I do this, it goes horribly wrong. Maybe let I me try it again. <laughs> it's It comes back to the like, just because you could yeah. doesn't mean that you should. So they screwed up and the locusts are living too long and it's destroying and crops. And, huh? <laughs> and overbreeding. And overbreeding heavily. Yeah. Um, but uh, all the crops are being destroyed except for Biosyn. And like I said, this there were like accusations and stuff thrown at Monsanto where like other farms would have like droughts and stuff, but yeah. then Monsanto's would be fine. They're like, yeah. oh, what's going on there? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the issue. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, something's going on here. We got to stop it. Biosyn wants Maisie, who is a genetic clone of her mother. Sure. Uh, and they also want Blue and her baby because mm -hmm. blue was able to reproduce asexually which some lizards can do yeah the, she's a, got monitor lizard dna yes. which they've never mentioned previously but apparently she has now yeah well there's a lot of retconning in this there's like multiple things happening mm. okay so our heroes from jurassic world are trying to save Maisie and beta from being experimented on by biosyn which will help them cover up their uh the the, issue. the the issue that they've caused yeah and then the second issue, the second story is Ellie and Alan Grant are teaming up with Ian Malcolm, who works for Biosyn, to get, to get the hard evidence to prove that they are responsible for all of this. Naturally. And also, Biosyn has been just stockpiling uh, dinosaurs in Italy. Yeah. Which I was like, whoa, I get Pennsylvania and Italy in this movie. Who would have known? Yeah. This is the first true globetrotting uh, Jurassic Park movie, yeah. which I enjoyed. I, I do appreciate yeah. what they were trying to do with a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. So that's the basic story in a nutshell. Now, what did you like about this film? Um, well, one, it was great to get all the old cast back, even though it was very plot wise, it was a little too convenient in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, I didn't, you know, I'm not going to get into what I didn't like yet, but like, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I liked the usage of some of the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. um, I liked. Claire's arc I thought was really great uh, overall from like you see Claire in the first film she appeared in versus mm. now like you see this full even the beginning of this film to the end of the film yeah. you see a huge arc for her character yeah. which is great um, I really like some of the new creatures the design work is great the effects work is phenomenal there's not one moment I'm looking at that screen where I'm not believing that that is a fucking dinosaur uh, except for maybe the pyroraptor and no, that was fine. But ironically, the one that probably would look like the most realistic dinosaur. No, I meant like, hey, he you looked, mean just he CGI. looked very CG. Yeah. But like the rest of them, like for the most part, looked pretty great. Yes. And uh, I just at no point did I question what I was watching. Yes. Uh, in that sense. Um, I didn't like. But we'll, we'll get to what we didn't. Uh, like. Sorry. sorry yeah, I'll, so, get, I'll save that. So, so what I liked. Yeah. I liked bringing the old cast back, but for different reasons. Yeah. Because bringing them back mm -hmm. over contrives the story and makes the movie too bloated. And they're yep. definitely not needed. Absolutely. And any other time I would have been like, this is a mistake. But knowing that they did it as a middle finger to Disney, I'm like, oh, I love it. <laughs> I lo like, I, I am allowing this horrible idea of bringing geriatric actors back for an adventure that I would normally despise. Yeah. But the fact that they're just spiting Disney because Disney accidentally brought their old actors back and then separated them and then killed them off yeah. without any kind of reunion. I'm yeah. like, I love that. I will allow this 
idiocy just to, just because and i know i should they be, were immediately like all of them together right yeah, now and quickly. i shouldn't be praising one billion dollar company spiting another billion dollar company but it's kind of a and again normally i'd be pissed that they're even dressed the same but i'm like yeah you know what i mean that was a little pandering no no that was very pandering but but it was spiting disney so i'm like yeah. fine look disney's buying everything I have to side with some shitty corporation just to spite another <laughs> shitty corporation. Um, so I enjoy, I enjoy the variety of the dinosaurs. Ten new species. Yes. Which is, I think, probably the most of any of the films in yes. one film as far as and like, I love, new species. I love seeing, just just on a visual level, I love seeing the dinosaurs in new environments. Because mm -hmm. that's something I used to fantasize about a kid. I'd be like, yeah. what if there was a dinosaur there? What was the dinosaur there? Like, yeah. oh, what was a dinosaur in the snow? So we're seeing all that. I liked a lot of the action. A lot yeah. of the action was really fun. I loved uh, some of the scary parts in it. Uh, I actually don't even mind. I know people are real pissed about the locust. Maybe they linger on it for a little too long. I don't mind the locust thing. I think it worked for... No, no, it the it locust thing purpose. Worked. I feel like people are, are mad that there's so many scenes dedicated to the locust, but yeah. I think that's because they had to find something for their old actors to yeah. do. Yeah. And they can't be running on motorcycles, so they're like, oh, well, they can deal with locusts. So I didn't mind that. Uh, overall, I think the movie is really fun but very very clunky what did you not like about it so i like so much about the movie like i went in i walked out of the theater very happy saying that like if this is the last jurassic world movie i'm okay with that like i'm walking away like i know <laughs> oh, no. it's not gonna be the oh, last no, no, no. thing this but is... it's the conclusion of this chapter of the series mm -hmm. and i felt like if this is it for what we've seen here like i, I thought it was a solid ending for what mm -hmm. it needs to be even though it didn't necessarily wrap everything up and uh i felt like bio scene was a very they weren't, you didn't really ever get an idea. They were very ambiguous. Okay, yes. Sorry. So, Biocene was very ambiguous. So, to me, it felt like, are they really the bad guys or is Dodgson just a dick? Like, yeah. it felt like Dodgson was a bad guy and everyone else was like, wait, you, what are you doing? Like, turn the thing on or fix this thing. Yeah. Like, they're trying to cover their own asses. I mean, they were they, well, being they're, they're, shitty by killing small farmers and I whatnot. I mean, yeah, but like, is that everyone or is that Dodgson? That, like, if the couple dickheads at the top are bad, doesn't mean like, it's the, it's the principal blowing up the Death Star. Yeah. Not everyone who works there is a bad guy necessarily. <laughs> they just work for the bad guys. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's not the bad guys to them. That's the government. So yeah. It's, it's, that's the job. I mean, that's the, the price of war, you know? Yeah, but, yeah. but this is a war. This is just, yes. I mean, we're saving dinosaurs. Like, well, I mean, there's, we, there's people who work for shitty corporations now that don't know what the higher ups are doing, and then they all look and that's, bad. And that's what I'm saying. That's the concept, though. Yeah. It's like, realistically, is Biocene all bad, or is it just like Dodgson's kind of a jerk? Because then you've yeah. got the other guy, um, Ramsey, yeah. who's like not a jerk at all. And who they was never... in Archive 81, which got canceled. Uh, it was a really good show. He's great. He's good. He's fun. I was like, I never, I've never seen him in anything before. Yeah. So to me, it was just like, who's this guy? I love oh, this guy. He's you know what? Fun. Let me let me circle back to what I like. I like the pilot lady. Yeah, Kayla yes. Watts. I'm I'm uh, actually Tawanda Wise. I want to uh, yeah, Tawanda Wise. I want to I want to thank Disney for putting out the the Miss Marvel show. So all the assholes were focused on that. Because like I I could totally tell people be like, oh Hollywood woke, blah 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 blah. But the character is not that at all. They were way too focused on. Uh, Miss Marvel to worry about the fact that there's now black people in Jurassic Park. Yeah, which there always have been. I mean, yeah, but not in like as prominent yeah. roles. But And I get it. Disney does And they do. even brought back Omar Sy from Jurassic World. Yeah, so. which they didn't have to do, which made the movie a little too long. Same with Franklin and Zari. I'm like, I don't I think mean, you needed them. I feel like... All right, so I liked that they brought back all the legacy characters they did. I mm. almost wish they shoehorned in some more. <laughs> but like... To the point where, like, for example, Franklin and Zara, uh, Zia, Zara, Zara? Zari? I think it's Zari. Well, Zari's the girl who got eaten by the Oh, never mind. Lena Luthor from Zia. Supergirl? Yeah, uh -huh. Zia. Uh, I think her name is Zia. Um, yeah. But uh, Cowboy Bebop girl. She, yeah. uh, they, I like that they brought them back for, like, that opening scene. Mm. But I felt like, again, it was a little much to bring them back. What was Franklin the... doing with his voice when he was suddenly a CIA guy? You showed on your talking like this. I'm like, yeah, what are you doing? Because Justice Smith is trying really hard to not just be that kid anymore. Uh, he's I trying guess. to act like he's in his 20s now. But and, now uh, I'm just like, and I've seen him in other movies. And I like him. He's not yeah, bad. He's fine. Um, but I just, I was listening to his voice. I'm like, what are you doing? So <laughs> my thing is, that, like, I like that they referenced a lot of the other characters that would make sense to reference. Like yeah. They even touch on, I'm, I'm a little bummed because you can tell exactly where I know Jake Johnson was supposed to be in this movie and yeah. scheduling issues prevented that, it. That's the but thing he we, was 100% going to be the CIA guy. Yeah. We forgot to mention, not only did they make a six hour movie, but they took like a year long break in production because they started filming. Yeah. Lockdown happened. So they probably had to rewrite a lot of things. Yes. And that really shows. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's like weird. There's weird jumps here and there. There's weird jumps here and there. It's very, what I didn't like, it was very, it was edited very poorly in some yeah. stuff. Not so much the action scenes, just like cutting the one scene to another. It's just yeah. clunky. There's a scene in the beginning, Alan Grant's introduction. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the importance of digging. Mm -hmm. And you see girls ignoring him on their cell phone. I'm like, yeah. oh, that was probably a longer scene where he's trying to get them excited, but they don't care. Yeah. But but they probably chopped it all down because they're like, we just need to cut to him meeting Ellie Sattler. Yeah. So now that scene just feels weird. It's like, now it just looks like an old man just rambling to fucking no one. It's like, gee, thanks, dad. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, and the thing is like, for example, during that scene, that's another perfect spot to throw in another cameo. Like, yeah. what the hell is Billy doing? Oh yeah, like that guy. I forget his name. I I literally wrote he's, it down yesterday. He's he, in other. He's in stuff. He's gonna be the bad guy in Craven, I think. What is that guy doing that he couldn't have like been there for two seconds? Even mm. if he didn't leave with them, just to be where Grant is yeah. doing the dig stuff. Like as well, a they colleague, had, they had the throat thing. They had the throat thing yeah. still there. I'm like that didn't need to be there, but it's there. So why wasn't Billy there also, who didn't need to be there, but it would have been cool to see? Mm -hmm. Like I'm sure that guy could have taken an afternoon. Yes. And shot like a two minute on a green screen, like on a green screen, like most of Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah. It's like <laughs> one thing where it's like he's also like just have him be a Jason, like have him be at Alan's dig site, even if it's just like there was a guy. I actually thought it was him at first. Mm. There's a guy that's like, Alan, you have a visitor up here. You should yeah. come. And it's just like some random guy who looks kind of like him, but yeah. it's not him. Or at least I, not addressed this. I'm mad that we didn't see the pterodactyls in the Kirby's hometown. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so. Yeah. What, what I what I didn't like the the clunky editing, mm. but that's a result of them they shouldn't have made that long yeah. of a movie in the beginning. Yeah. But also it could be them getting a little too ahead of themselves, but it also could be a result of them redoing most of the movie because of COVID. Yeah. Which I can't really blame on them. So yeah, uh what I didn't like, uh the T Rex subplot. <sighs> so they cut out the beginning of the movie and they released the whole thing where they showed the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. And the T Rex at the movie theater mm -hmm. or the drive in, mm -hmm. that's not in the movie. Yeah, that was all part of the, um, just the marketing from what I understand. Well, no, now. that was, I believe that was supposed to be in the movie. Mm. But when it got delayed, they were like, well, we got to give people something. So they, I think that's what they did. They're like, we'll give them this, the prologue. But then I guess they were like, well, that prologue's been out for a year. We don't need it in the movie. And it's like, well, you should probably include it. You should probably include it because now there's this thing where it's like, oh, there's the T Rex and the Giganotosaurus. Uh, they don't get along, and then at the end, it feels like it's a rematch, but if you didn't watch the prologue, it's like, what does this have to... The so, fight at the end was dumb as hell and so, did not uh, need to be there. So, I genuinely thought the Giganotosaurus was just literally, that was the most Batman and Robin bullshit I've ever seen in my life. It literally exists to sell toys. Don't, don't move. Every yeah. single scene with the Giganotosaurus could have just been the T-Rex yeah. and it would have been more satisfying. The nostalgia would have been there. Like yeah. seeing Malcolm with the giant torch well, trying to the, flag the thing down. If that thing. was the actual Rex, it would have been like the, it was the you, yeah. <laughs> you know, the well, you here's the thing. the thing with that is, and I know it's an animal it has no morals, but audience wise, since the end of the first Jurassic Park, that's mm -hmm. now a good guy. So I, I mean, know I get it. I, get I mean, we, but then you saw it do the stuff in the beginning of Fallen Kingdom, where it literally was but just it like was doing that to bad guys. They, I mean, I guess they're bad guy. I mean, that guy with the little computer wasn't really a bad guy. He was a guy. He was working for bad guy. Look, it doesn't make any sense. Doesn't I'm matter. Saying, he's a bad guy. I'm just uh, saying. The she's as a good far, guy now. as far as the audience and the little kids are concerned, that's she's the had good an guy. arc and now she's a good guy. So we need yeah. the we need a new big bad guy, and I don't mind the Giganotosaurus. Um, I I thought it was just such a waste like it didn't seem i thought it was cool i like when it, it was trying to eat him bursted its like head through it, the thing i like the animatronic for it was yeah, awesome i thought it sorry it looked great yes but it to me served no true purpose other than selling toys yeah and i i felt like that was just too much i feel like it didn't mm. need to be there i just and it was it was one of the things where any scene if you could take any scene of that movie and just swap the rex in for that it mm. would have been more satisfying to me. yeah i mean it would have felt more like an actual jurassic World, yeah. Jurassic Park I mean, I'm, I'm on board with Giganata. Mm -hmm. I, I understand these movies have to introduce new dinosaurs, yeah. and I thought that was fine. It's just the fight at the end I did not need. Yeah. And then, because it's basically just the first fight again. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, the T-Rex is dead, and I thought it was dead this time. I, I seriously, like, that was my don't kill my, don't watch me, like, watch my childhood die. I'm that like, was please. where it did it for me. And by the way, it's, it's just that T-Rex. I'll watch 10,000 T-Rexes die. Yeah, yeah, specifically. I love they Carnosaur. Can't... I've watched multiple T-Rexes be killed with 
giant farm equipment. Um, Sp- specifically, <laughs> specifically, it's like, I don't want to watch Rexy but now, But now I'm wondering, because I guess they made the T-Rex in the 80s, right? Yeah. So I guess it has Hulk Hogan DNA. Because now she does this thing where she's completely dead, and it just gets that <laughs> bit of energy, and then they're Like they gave her the adrenaline shot. Like, there's like a copy up there, like... <laughs> Is that going to be the promotional material? It's like Hulk Hogan at Jurassic Park, and like, having taken take a needle of his blood. Because <laughs> now, like, if you ever watch like a Hulk Hogan match, he's like down... They raise it, and then the third one, he just gets all the energy. And the Rex just stands up and like rips yeah. its shirt clean off. So, <laughs> so they're redoing that where it's like, all right, they're fighting again, but now it's just like, oh, by the way, Big Bird's there. Yeah, a Big Bird is now friends with the T Rex. For some reason, and then at the end, they all they did the acknowledging <laughs> they, nod they, again. They like the- teamed up. <laughs> like what? But it was dumb when you guys did it the first time. Now it's completely. Yeah, I felt like that was like super redundant to have done it where they were just like, yeah, uh, here's Edward Scissorhands and he's there and he's just like at the end, they're just sort of like, hey, high five. And like. (laughs) I did like, like that just, dinosaur too. I actually Therizinosaurus I, was amazing. When she's like underneath the water, that was pretty tense. That was that yeah. that, that thing was one of my favorite sequences, and that's probably my favorite new addition to the series yeah. in this film. Yeah. Like I love the design. I love that they really went with it. I like that they made it maliciously violent. Yeah. Where he just walked up to the deer and was like uh, for yeah. no reason. It didn't even eat it. Yeah. It was just like mm-hmm. I mean, animals do that. There's yeah. animals that would like kill other animals not for food, just out of curiosity. Yeah, so. but what the fuck is this? I love everything with the Giganotosaurus except the dumb fight because we didn't need a I dumb just, fight. I felt like the whole Giganotosaurus yeah. thing was just too much. Well, that and like mm. there's other dinosaurs where they're just like, let's just say it's there. Just say, there's the, it comes now, down to what I don't like about the Giganotosaurus. They had to keep reminding you how big it was. Bigger. Why do they always have to go bigger? It's like, mm-hmm. all right. And then it's Giganotosaurus. It's the biggest, like. Yeah, I, I heard you. And then if the, and then Alan Grant, that's it's, the biggest. It's like, guys, I fucking that's know. That's the biggest fucking dinosaur like, that's ever been a dinosaur. Yeah, like you told me three times. I get it. They I get had, it. And it's then big. they had, um, God, what the hell is the other thing? That they they literally flew over it. And they're like, oh, here's that fucking thing. It's gigantic. Oh, uh, the dreadnought. The dreadnought. Yeah, I, yeah. I was like, I was about to say the juggernaut or something. But they're like, <laughs> like here's that fucking thing. Look at it. It's, <laughs> it's huge. And they show it. And you yeah. know why they're showing it? Because yeah. Target has a toy coming yes. out this summer. Yes. Uh, and I'm excited about it because I have no idea where it's going. I I've already got the Apatosaurus <laughs> and the Brachiosaurus. Well, I hope you bring it on our I almost friend brought show. all of them here. I hope you bring them on our friend show, Peg Warmers, which you should all subscribe to. Speaking of Peg Warmers, sorry to break up the thing here. Yeah. If you're wondering where the rest of my dinosaur toys are that I usually pull out for these, you should check out the Jurassic Park Toys episode of Peg Warmers, where me and my good friend Clayton teamed up with Kevin, and I showed him all our Jurassic Park stuff. You brought on a couple Jurassic Park stuff in episodes before. I, I brought think. on Jurassic Park stuff in episodes. You brought on De- Dennis Nedry, right? I brought on the uh, original. Dennis- I brought on so much stuff. You brought in the original Dennis Nedry. I, I think, did. Looks nothing like Dennis. Looks Nedry. nothing like Wayne Knight. But they did show Dodgson had the embryo can now, which that is something was- that supposed it, it was rescued during the game, yeah. which is not canon, but and it, it was crushed during the game. That's the thing with the, all right. So with the embryo, it's like, why did he have the can? I mean, I understand. I that's I'm saying that's the movie I want now is them mm. going and getting the fucking can. Yeah, but like the thing, the thing with the can was, and even the game had to come up with a reason. The can was only going to last like what, like thirty something to be hours? viable, but they could still figure some stuff out. Maybe they could, but like the thing with it falling into the mud. I explained this to Jurassic Park. Um, that's more to like show like his comeuppance. He did all this and it meant nothing. Yeah, and it'll never be found. And I guess they found it, but like he's like taking the can at the end when he's trying to leave. It's like why? Because he's probably not coming back there, and it's like a I'm trophy. like, did he put? But was there a scene where he put new embryos in it? I'm like, I feel like he just put them in a suitcase. I mean, at that point, I feel like it's more of a like this is maybe how he got. Maybe yeah. eventually getting that thing is how Biosyn really became where it was. But they yeah. probably cut that scene. Yeah. The thing I loved is that they brought in uh, Ramsey Cole, the new character. Mm. I think Ramsey Cole is that right? I, I know it's Ramsey, but I can't remember if I'm getting the right name. Uh, but yeah. either way, loved the character. Really glad that they had him be like the the good guy showing yeah. Dodge and his comeuppance. Um, I don't. I feel like it was kind of ambiguous as to why, other than he's just not a shit heel. Yeah, they they kind of. I guess you just say he's a good guy and he wants to whatever. I but just, it, I, just, I feel like we're missing a lot with his character. Somewhere in an executive meeting, there was definitely a discussion. And I'm saying this. I'm making this up essentially. Yeah. But like somewhere during an executive meeting, they're like, "What if he's Samuel L. Jackson's son?" Which or, I'm glad they didn't. That's do. what I'm saying. I'm glad someone had the balls to just be like, "Don't do that." Oh. <laughs> Because we're not we're not gonna Lando this thing. There was one there was <laughs> one scene where I went, don't do it. 
So there's been this fan theory that the uh, shitty kid from Jurassic Park that's making fun of Grant is, is the growing up Owen, which that actor is a little weird. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, I, I've known people who work for him. I work <laughs> with him. Uh, but anyway, uh, Owen, people said like that's the grown up Owen and whatnot. So when Alan Grant went, I know you, I went, don't, don't, don't. And then he was like, you train the Raptors. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Okay, because Star Wars, <laughs> that's the most annoying thing with Star Wars. Like, everyone has to be related. It's like, yeah. do they have to be? Like, that's, I don't... that's the one thing that drove me nuts about the new, the final, the, the whole Lando's daughter thing. Dude, it pissed me off in the prequels when they're like, everyone's related. It's like, it literally only was cool the first time. Even Leia was like, oh, I, I guess. <laughs> and every time after that, it's been really annoying. So I'm yeah. glad Jurassic Park didn't, didn't do anything do like that. I was really scared they were gonna. Yeah. Um, you don't need to. You don't, you don't need, need to. to. It didn't need to happen, and I'm glad it didn't. There there were some annoying pandering, unneeded pandering stuff. Yeah. Uh, but what my biggest issue with the movie is it is kind of, other than editing and story stuff, Lewis Dodson was just, you're right. He was kind of, I never he really was, got a read on him. He was very ambiguous. Yeah. Campbell Scott was, I mean, he did what like, he did with the script. He's but eating he's, stuff. He's got weird character quirks but we never really got to like the last two movies i understood those bad guys yeah this one i feel like we're not given enough information on him speaking of bad guys in the yeah. last two movies one of the biggest things i didn't like no. was the new characterization of dr Wu, who was like this fiendish like i'm a villain now <laughs> yeah. when guy. am i getting in the last paid? one and in the second one he was just like like oh i'm still a villain but like i'm trying to do this to do it the right way ha <laughs> ha yeah. And then in this one, he's just like, I'm sad because I made well, a bad thing. Well, I uh, and like I understand being like, oh shit, I might have doomed the planet. Like I'm sure that's giving you some yeah. weird mental stuff. Yeah. But like he just felt like such a departure from the character. Yeah. And the biggest, my biggest, biggest problem with this whole movie is that I feel like they skipped a movie in between. Well, that's what I'm getting to with my issue. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, just the last few issues, the the pandering stuff, like. Like, there were too many winks and nods toward the end. Like, Ian Malcolm with the thing. Ian, all right, I know it would have pissed everyone off. With that been. scene with him with the flame, the 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 torch, I'm like, he better get eaten. And he did it. I expected them to do it. Yeah, and you know what? As funny as the scene was, like, I wouldn't have minded it, to be honest. I, I was like, yeah, I know it. It would have been, gen it been a genuine moment, and it yeah. would have been a... um. And it would have been like an arc almost because yeah. it would have been him like, you know, showing that he's like, you know, yeah. not the shit heel people make him out to be. Yeah. Uh, as much as he's like the quirky, fun character, he has always been kind of a self-serving yeah. dick in a lot of ways. But but then they do and like uh, his shirt on button. He's like, oh, and like, the yeah, girl I was get like, it. I get it. The that meme. was too much. That was yeah, too that much. was too much. Uh, there were a couple other things. I don't I know it's a cool IMAX poster, but I don't think we needed a long scene showing the T-Rex walk in front of a circle <laughs> so it can kind of look like the logo. I'm yeah. Like, Okay. Like it worked as a poster, but yeah, it's not like, as a scene. Okay, got it. Uh, there's stuff like that. Uh, Maisie redoing the whole Maisie story. Like they went back and changed it. Where it's like her grandfather didn't bring her back. It's her mother did it and gave birth to herself. And you know, then changed I actually it. didn't mind that change. I didn't uh, mind that retcon for her. I wouldn't I have felt mind. Like, I felt like it made her more interesting and it it, it gave her. I guess it's just, I wouldn't have minded if that's how it was initially, but they made it seem like Lockwood did it. And that's yeah. what causes falling out with like whatever. It, it made yeah. it seem like he did it as like a thing where he was. Like, I'm sure he was responsible yeah. for it. Cause yeah, she used all the stuff, but yeah. yeah. That, that one, I was like, all right, I get it works for this movie, but like it kind of... It, it, it makes more sense as, like, a sad parent doing it for their dead child. Yeah. But, like, I didn't mind this change here because I felt mm. like it worked in a lot of ways. Yeah. And, it you know, they, they used it as part of the main plot for why Wu needed to kidnap her. Yeah. Or whatever. Now, and, uh, here, here's the thing. So, Jura Fallen Kingdom, it sets up. I'm like, I want to see all this explored in the new movie. Dinosaurs <laughs> all over the world. And, and we, we it's not about any of that. We do kind of get it. I love the black market in Mal Malta. That, that was, was cool. cool. Uh, but I it became very clear because so Star Wars realized they kind of screwed up with their trilogy, but they're having success with their spinoff shows. Yeah. Uh, even though I'm not a fan of them, they are having success with them. Yeah. No. Yeah. And I'm like, and then they did the Battle of Big Rock, the short film mm -hmm. before this, and they made that Jurassic World logo, and I'm like, oh, oh, this isn't a movie. This is getting you excited for potential spinoffs. And I know that because Fast and the Furious also has a kid's cartoon, much like Jurassic World, and also started doing spinoffs. I'm like, we're getting way more Jurassic Park stuff. Mm -hmm. We are getting, this is just to be like, 
hey, we're telling you this story here and finishing off these characters, but the dinosaurs are out there. This some is the of taste them, of things to come. I love the ending where it's like, hey, some of them, like, hey, we're going to eventually learn to coexist. There's going to be problems, but you see that, like, some of them are able to coexist. Yeah. Uh, but we're, this is going to, instead of just, like, telling the story in this movie, it's mm -hmm. just setting you up to see it explored in many other films. I just, I think my favorite kick in the teeth about the whole thing. Yeah is that they made this promise at the end of Fallen Kingdom about mm. like dinosaurs are loose and it's going to be chaos and all this shit's going to be crazy. No. And then they gave us a movie, none of that. They gave us a movie about yeah. none of that. And very, then- Very few and, and far between. And then they had the guts to put us effectively back on an island yeah. in the middle of a mountain range they, they in went, Italy. They went to the beautiful Dolomite Mountains <laughs> of were, the wonderful country of Italy. Yeah, they were just like, uh, it's not an island this time. It's a secluded mountain range with invisible fences. Yeah. Ooh. But like, I love conceptually that that's what yeah. they decided to do because I'm just yeah. like, so you're telling me you burned down my fucking <laughs> island? You burned down my island hey, to hey, do this and Jordan, put them in- Jordan. Jordan, do uh, you have a problem with my father's home country of Italy and dinosaurs <laughs> living there? I'm getting a little, uh, I'm getting a little fat. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. It's the dinosaurs with the accents that get me. <laughs> but yeah, now that we've talked about these movies, yeah, and you could break it up between. Let, let's let's uh, let's try to have fun with this. We already mentioned our favorites, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, best Jurassic Park sequel, so two and three. What what are you picking? Lost World, hands down. All right, I'm picking three. Okay, now best Jurassic, best Jurassic World movie. First one, no, no question to me. That's mm. that's to me that was the movie that when it came, that was exactly the movie. It gave me a hundred percent the movie I wanted from it. Okay, I walked into that with very low expectations because I had seen Jurassic Park three before that, yeah. and it had been like <laughs> a long time. So I'm just like, it'll be fun. Maybe I'll revisit the Jurassic. It'll be cool to revisit the franchise after all this time. Yeah, and it gave me a movie that let me sort of dive back into the nostalgia factor of my childhood mm. and introduce me to new characters. I, I at the at the time I was still very much high on the Chris Pratt train, so I was like, oh, yeah. I love Chris Pratt. Like, oh, I love Bryce Dallas Howard. Jake Johnson's in this, and they got Vincent D'Onofrio. What's yeah. not to like? B.D. Wong's back. Great. Yeah, and like, I just liked everything about what they were doing for that film. I liked the story. I loved seeing Hammond's dream realized with the park functioning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and to me, that was like getting to see something that I'd always wanted but never knew how to articulate. Yes. Fallen Kingdom, I outright hate still. Okay. Uh, and the new one, I like it. Yeah. I liked it a lot, but it still has issues. Yes. To me, I don't have any, other than some dodgy CG, I have no complaints on the first yeah. Jurassic World at all. Okay, so for me, my favorite Jurassic Park sequel is three because mm -hmm. it kind of... It just embraces how kind of stupid it is. It's a dumb, yeah. fun chase. Uh, I'm going best Jurassic World. I I really like Fallen Kingdom. We have like the polar opposite. We have the polar opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I really like Fallen Kingdom, and it's got its issues. Mm -hmm. But um, honestly, I, if they ever release an extended version of Dominion that flows a lot better, it'll still be too long. It'll still have some stuff I don't like. But if that if they re if they have a version of that movie that feels more like a movie mm -hmm. instead of just scenes that are just frantically happening. I mean, they can there. release, they could Snyder cut that, release it as a six hour cut into hour and a half chunks. And which I, I wouldn't mind. I would watch the hell out of it. Which that. I wouldn't mind. So maybe this might change at some point. Cause I did have a lot of fun with the new one, but I, yeah. it was one of those things where I'm turning off my brain a lot, but there's parts where I'm like, this isn't connecting. This isn't connect. This is feels out of place. So Jurassic world fallen kingdom. It gives me the change that I like. Yeah. It gives me dinosaurs in new environments. Um, it gives me that horror feel, which I feel like was missing since the first movie. Yeah. Um, although I do love the Spinosaurus at night in the rain. I mean, like, the, all them of the them road. have their good horror sequences, yes. except for maybe the first Jurassic World. Yes. Like, yeah, that one doesn't have. That doesn't really have any horror stuff. sequences. It's but mostly like, action. The third one has the Spinosaurus in the water yeah. sequence. The the second one has the Raptor sequence, and the second one's fucking terrifying. Yeah, that was pretty. And cool. like, like that's that, yeah. and like the the trailer sequence. Yeah. is like. Again, it's like really intense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Fallen Kingdom really gave me what I wanted. Uh, and what I didn't know I wanted. I didn't know that I wanted Resident Evil. And the, by the way, I also used to love Dino Crisis. I was Crisis. about to say, like, you just didn't know you wanted a Dino Crisis so, so movie because movies, I feel like, like we oh, all yeah. secretly. I'm like, oh, yeah, these feel like Dino Crisis. And we're never going to get a Dino Crisis movie. You don't know reason. that. Supposedly that IP recently got um, uh -huh. brought back up as a thing. Well, they might I've be making a Resident new one. Evil movie, so I don't know how much I want. No, I'm talking about like as a game. They might oh, be, yeah. They I might would be love doing, to see a remake. I would love to see them redo Dino Crisis. Yeah. 
Um, and again, as a, and by the way, people were like, why does Tony like the bad ones? I don't know, maybe because I watched the Carnosaur trilogy a million times, so I'm more accepting of wacky dinosaur movies. I mean, yeah, that, and that, those are fun. Those you know, are fun. Dinosaur so, movies have always been, the thing is, they're not always good, but they're always fun, regardless. Oh, uh, I, I can find some bad ones for you. Uh, okay, you know, I've, <laughs> see, I've seen Poseidon Rex, so I understand <laughs> now, how bad some of them can be. Now, Lost World versus Jurassic World, which one are you going for? I'm torn. Uh, it's it's almost impossible to choose for me because do I, a, do I have a coin? <laughs> it's it's literally almost impossible for me to choose because the Lost World is always going to be a movie that I grew up on that and <laughs> it's what is that? If you want to flip, this is a sticker we got. It's a guy dancing with a grapefruit where his penis should be. Sure. If you want to flip this, so uh, <laughs> grapefruit up will be Lost World. I no, I can't. I'm not going to flip it. <laughs> well, I, um... I'm going to flip it for you. All right, ready, ready. <sighs> Oh, damn it. It went. He's dipping his wick in your drink. All right, so it went into my drink. And standing, it's standing up. Standing up. So yeah. All right. Uh, so, but that's it. It's like it's, it comes down to. I can't believe so that happened. The Lost World has the nostalgia factor of I grew up on this, and it, like when yeah. that movie hit, the marketing was such a huge part of my life because yeah. it was everywhere. Yeah. I have. I still. I recently found a box of my stuff in my parents' garage, mm. and I have the full set of watches from Burger King still. <laughs> and I was like, had, Kieran has one of them. I yeah. was ecstatic <laughs> that I found those. I thought they were lost like five moves ago. <laughs> so I was like thrilled to have found this box yeah. in my parents' garage with a bunch of my stuff in it. Yeah. Uh, but like for me, it's, the Lost World was such a huge part of who I am. Mm. But the law, but Jurassic World, I feel like is a, of the two of them the better film. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, so, if that makes sense, like no, no, I feel like, like I said, take, like I said, there is a difference between favorite and best. Yeah, that's. And, I think that's where yeah. I, where it is. For and me. I always, like, I always bring up. I think my favorite Mission Impossible is two, and it's the worst one. Yeah, but so like, there's a huge difference between yeah, favor, yeah. favorite and best, and I think that that's Definitely. where I think that as a sequel to Jurassic Park, Jurassic World is probably the best of the films. Okay, so for me, to me. yeah, for me, uh. Well, obviously, I'm going to pick Fallen Kingdom over three just because Fallen Kingdom had a finished script or a, <laughs> or had a script. It had a script at all. I'm sure it was definitely rewritten many, many times, uh, but it had a script, unlike Jurassic Park 3, where they had the Alien 3 thing. It's like, we're, we're filming. We have no pages. Uh, uh, just make it up. It's fine. <laughs> so I will go with Fallen Kingdom. Yeah, take your shirt off. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, Fallen Kingdom, it gives me what I want out of these kind of movies and dinosaur movies in general. And you know what? It might have been if Dominion wasn't as clunky as it was, and if it didn't get distracted by putting too many characters in, that might have been what I would have picked. Mm -hmm. I will I will revisit. If we get an extended cut, I will revisit this. But Fallen Kingdom right now for me, I think that's the best sequel, and I know I'm a contrarian. Sure. But you know what? I want to give myself a little bit of praise here. I get yelled at for not liking new movies all the time, even though I do. People yell at me for not liking the new Star Wars stuff, which I legitimately gave a shot to. Yeah, that's fair. I didn't even hate Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still getting yelled at for not liking the new Ghostbusters. The new new uh, Ghostbusters? Yes. Oh, I hated okay. it. But people are always like, you hate everything. Oh, you just hate everything. I'm like, no, I'm, I really like these movies. And then I'm like, I like Fallen Kingdom. I'm like, you're an idiot for liking that. I'm like, I can't fucking win. I can't win. I can't. <laughs> I just, I'm like, do I hate everything or am i liking just, you just like what everyone else doesn't like and i'm not like that i'm trying you're not, not to be you're like, not trying to be a hipster about it it's just how worst, it happens you know it's really funny <laughs> when i like something that is universally praised or hate something that does have a lot of hate toward it and then i get told that i'm wrong i'm like well now i'm doing the common opinion what i can't win i no matter what i do i can't win <laughs> see i'm the person that like it's weird how much I actively I'm like very uh very open and loud about how much I don't like Fallen Kingdom. Yeah. But like I'm the guy who likes like every bad movie that comes out. <laughs> and I'm just like like I still get flack because 10 years ago I gave a good review to the Green Hornet movie. Uh, and uh cuz like I thought it was I'm, I'm it not was, with, I'm not I'm with you like, on that one. I'm just like it was fun. I liked what they tried to well, do with it. And it's like it's one of those things where like I very rarely openly hate something. Yeah. I very much am the person who likes and enjoys most forms of media, even mm -hmm. if they're not great, because I'll always find the silver lining and I'll say, well, that movie wasn't very good, but here's this great stuff about it. Like Green Lantern movie. Yeah. Love that too for some reason. I don't uh, know why. I don't I had a post I had the one sheet. I'm talking <laughs> about like the big yeah. like giant one sheet for the Ben Affleck Daredevil movie on my wall <laughs> for 15 years. And 
it was still like to me it was like Daredevil was my favorite character in comics mm. so yeah. it was like I'd rather have a middling movie than a bad one yeah. and to me it was like it was okay it wasn't terrible it just wasn't yeah. great and there's now, things I liked so uh, real quick now we're talking about like movies and stuff we like before we end this um, yes because we just talked about two two movies that could be considered a third Jurassic Park 3 and uh, Jurassic World Dominion and we're talking about these different franchises what, what did you think of the Dark Knight Rises uh, the Dark Knight Rises is awful um I feel like there's a lot of problems with it. I also am not one of those people who likes the Nolan films. So I'm I'm like one of those, those guys that I'm just like, it's not like I'm disliking it for the sake of disliking it. I just never really now, now, enjoyed that okay, Batman okay. universe. Okay. Well, you're wrong, but I'm going to ask you a follow-up <laughs> question. What what did you think of the extras in the crowd during the football scene, especially the section behind the goal? Was that the, you? The goal? Are you there? Because uh, they filmed in Pittsburgh, didn't they? Or yeah, I, like I, was, I was there. That's was fair. There. Was that scene good? Yeah, that was good. You, you like that scene? Yeah, there was this really handsome guy in the scene in the back. <laughs> was that your favorite scene? Probably. Okay, as long as that's... I like, I like when Bane compliments the kid. He's like, oh, what a beautiful voice. Yes, the <laughs> like, director's son. That's actually... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the... um. That's my my COVID mask is the Bane mask, actually, because <laughs> I said if I'm going to wear one, I'm going to I have, have a Bane mask right there. <clears throat> Oh, did you no, not know? Did you not know I was in the Dark Knight Rises? I did not actually. Oh, yeah, but I'm in the Dark Knight Rises. I generally speaking, I uh, I don't like that Batman universe. By, by, by the way, uh, I brought it up many times. Someone gave me that poster of every time code that I've mentioned it in the first hundred so episodes. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that is it from us. Uh, your oh god, oh no, this little T Rex fell. Oh my god! I feel so. It's not an. It's not even an accurate model of a T Rex. No. It's very inaccurate. I would Absolutely. be embarrassed to own this. Anyway, that is it from us. I'm picking Fallen Kingdom as the best sequel. You are picking Jurassic World. I think I'm picking Jurassic World. Uh, yeah. I probably my. If we're talking about favorite sequel, I probably like Jurassic Park three the most because of how wacky it is. Yeah, we're and both we're both like, in the same boat. We're like, yeah. I like the Lost World the best because yeah. it's like it's the nostalgia factor for me. Yeah, but Jurassic World I think is better. Um, than but yeah, what do you think is the best Jurassic Park or World sequel? Do you agree with what we said? Are you yelling at us right now? Are you only yelling at one of us and agreeing with the other? You're probably yelling at me and agreeing with Jordan. I'm I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to end up. I don't know uh, yet. Um, Jordan, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on most social medias as at Jordan under, sorry, Jordan, at Jordan Miss Prime with an underscore in the middle. Cool. Uh, I'm pretty much everywhere. I'm also on geekanything.com, which is my website where we talk about anything and everything geeky. We do cool. news, reviews, uh, interviews with celebrities mm. uh, and things like that. I actually just talked to most of the crew for Clerks 3, so that's going to oh, be cool. exciting because that's coming up soon. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what we do. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, and you can like, share, and subscribe here. Join our Patreon, call our voicemail line. Uh, speaking of franchises that uh, Spielberg needs to bring back, uh, he's bringing back Indiana Jones again. For some reason, yeah. Uh, Let I, it die. It belongs in a museum. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really think he needs to revisit the greatest thing he's ever produced, and that's arachnophobia. Do you like arachnophobia? Oh, my God, yes. I feel like everyone should YouTube search arachnophobia. And then maybe one day I'll talk I mean, about I don't it. think they're going to get movie results with that search. But like. Oh, yeah. I, all right. So I started this bit a few <laughs> yeah. weeks ago and people have been like, hey, I'm kind of scared of the results. I'm like, oh, shit. Maybe I mean, maybe not- YouTube search arachnophobia movie. <laughs> um, That's the one. But yes, I think this was Amblin's peak uh, product. And I'm surprised. We don't have 10,000 arachnophobia movie. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a movie that should have sequels. It but should. Doesn't. It should. Anyway, that is it from us. Thank you for watching. Let us know what you think is the best below and goodbye. Good night, folks. We are waiting for the dark souls of fighting games. Let us have it. We're ready. <laughs> Soul Edge has nothing on a lightsaber. Like, I'm sorry. James Earl Jones comes back. No. no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think kids trade games yeah. anymore. I need that sense of accomplishment and it wasn't there. And I think that that was a major flaw. The way they engineer these is just phenomenal. As much as you're into like the comics, I was very into the toys. So I was on like the message board all yeah. the time. Yeah. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.